ever wonder how people overcome traumatic life events that really change their lives? Things like getting sick and winding up in a world that's silent and dark, or having an accident that leaves you completely paralyzed, or how about someone whose entire life, both personal and career lives, are filled with defeat and loss and defeat and loss over and over and over again. Hi, I'm Reverend Ellie Bierman. I'm so glad that you came by here today to join us for our gathering of Metaphysical Ministry International. So what's a metaphysical ministry anyway? Well, it has to do with the fact that the world is created using more than just our five senses and therefore what we need to be able to do to experience what's going on out there is learn how to go beyond what we can see, hear, taste, smell, and touch. And then you've got to experience the 99% of reality that will so enrich your life. We begin every week with a happy share and that's something that leaves you feeling good, feeling happy, feeling peaceful. And for me, I kind of had a couple bad days in the last week, and it just made me stop and take a look at how well I'm doing, because I also had a couple of outstanding days. And sometimes when we feel bad, we forget how far we've come. And I started thinking, well, it's been two years, why aren't I all better since the brain surgery, but the fact is, I'm doing really, really well, and the fact is, I am healing, and the fact is, yes, yeah, some brains were badly damaged, but the fact also is, my brain's creating totally new pathways, so I can regain all that functioning. Now, getting back to the traumatic events, well, I kind of threw it out there, and if you've been here a while, you know anyway. I myself survived not one, but two traumatic brain injuries. And I'm going to share with you now how people who have these traumatic, life-altering events get through. Let's start by looking at Helen Keller. Helen Keller was born a normal kid, but when she was just 17 months old, she got really sick. And she ran a fever that took away her sight and her hearing. And there she was suddenly, this little child, in a world that was dark and silent. When she was about seven, Ann Sullivan came and taught her how to communicate. And, you ready for this? She was able to speak by the time she was ten years old. Now Helen Keller grew up, got a college degree, became a famous author, speaker, and an activist. She said, Life is either a great adventure or it's nothing. And that's how I feel. I've certainly been on an extraordinary adventure going through a couple of injuries. I can relate to the part of not being able to see, but thankfully, it wasn't because my world went dark. It was because when I was a psychotherapist and a client attacked me, she hit me repeatedly in the head. And it caused such severe brain damage at the time that I was retired on medical disability and I discovered, yeah, don't see with your eyes, you see with your brain. And my brain was hurting. So everything was so horribly distorted, it was excruciatingly painful and I could not maintain my balance if my eyes were open. So for 17 months while my brain was healing, I kept my eyes closed for as much as possible. Guess what? My hearing got so sharp when I was walking outdoors, I could tell if I was walking by, say, a car or a tree or a building, because I could hear the difference in air flowing. And when I was walking by something, the air wasn't flowing. I also discovered when I poured a glass of water, I could tell when the glass was getting full because the pitch was rising. Well, what pitch? 
quart glass of water and you'll see what I mean. It's quite an extraordinary adventure that I got to be part of when I had no short-term memory for three years. Couldn't follow conversations. So cool the way the universe works. I had to go inside. I had to learn who I am. I had to meet my higher self. I had to learn how to get the communications from the universe because I couldn't do too well talking to people or watching TV. Next, moving on to Christopher Reeve, who was the quintessential Superman. Until that day when a horse threw him, damaged his spinal cord, Christopher Reeve spent the rest of his life paralyzed from the neck down in a wheelchair. And yeah, he went through depression and some suicidal thoughts at first, but then as he was going through his rehab, he realized, well, so I have a different set of circumstances, my body's different, I need to reinvent myself, make my life new and different. So, he became a producer and a director and an author and a speaker. And in fact, he was such an inspirational and motivational speaker that Time Magazine named him Person of the Year. He told us, I know many people whose bodies are fully functioning, but they're more paralyzed than I am. What could he have meant by that? Do you know anybody who has some kind of diagnosis, an injury, something like depression or anxiety, that every time you ask them to do something with you or to be with you or just to go out there and make a difference, participate in life, they wear their disability or whatever their label is as something to hide behind, as an excuse. Oh, I had this awful brain injury. I'm so tired. I can't function. I've been there. I know what that's like. And yes, it's true. But I also know, well, I do this myself. I made a choice. I made a choice not to settle for surviving with a brain injury and watching life pass by. I made a choice to put in all the extra work it took so that I could do what I needed to do to heal. And I had to reinvent myself. I had been a psychotherapist. I had been a really, really smart person. I had been very athletic. And I lost a lot of that. So I became someone who works in energy. I discovered the whole world of metaphysics and possibilities and how I create my own reality and Instead of doing talk therapy, I found a way to work with people that works instantly, deeper, and it's permanent. And I really, really liked the life I got to move into because the brain injury took me out of my former way of life. Well, what about people who keep trudging through life and they have loss after loss personal in their lives? People who they really love dying. Loss after loss in business failure and losing elections until he won the election to the presidency just at the time when states were seceding from the Union. Abraham Lincoln became president at the time where he was feeling it necessary to protect the inalienable rights of people and their freedom in the Civil War. He became our most often quoted president and he also realized and he had to do this through his own perseverance or he never could have become so powerful and so effective. He recognized it's our birthright, it's our birthright to be happy, to be free. And what he told us is, you are as happy as you think yourself to be. I'm going to repeat that. You are as happy as you think yourself to be, because it's what goes on up here in the six inches between your ears. 
because it's your life to look the way it does. So what's the secret that every one of these people had? What's the secret that allowed me to come back after the brain surgery when I could not speak, I could not swallow, I could not walk, I could barely move? What kept me going? What kept Abraham Lincoln going? What kept Christopher Reeve going? What kept Helen Keller going? Knowing that their lives had changed and it was time for them, for me, to change too. To look at your life and see what is working, to see what you have going in your favor, rather than focusing on what's wrong, what's missing, and the things that keep showing up in your life that you don't want. Well, it's because what you focus on expands. So the way to have a different life is to focus on something different and start. Start where you are. Accept yourself as you are. I had to accept myself as someone who wasn't quite this sharp anymore. I had to accept myself as someone who couldn't draw or create. I was an artist when I was a psychotherapist also, and a musician. I couldn't do any of those things for years. As a scholar, I had to drop out of school. And after the brain surgery, well, I just couldn't do much of anything. It's pretty hard to get through a day when you can't swallow and you can't talk and you have to make a conscious effort to do things that you used to take for granted that your body did automatically. So my secret looked for the gift in how your life looks. Look for the gift in the injury. Look for the gift in the disappointment. Look for the gift in what appears to be the struggle. Start from there to make your life great. Now, if you're on the ministry page and you look up there, you will see a page called Hold a Space For. And if there's something in your life that you'd like to manifest that's not happening right now, tell us exactly what it is. I'll add it to that page up there. Then come back every week. Tell your friends to come. Tell your family to come and read every name and what people asked us to hold the space for on that page. And that way, when you're asking the universe to give it to you and you're putting out that little thought form, but it's very real and the universe is going to deliver it, but what if? What if a whole lot of other people saw you having that reality, living that way? That thought form would get bigger and bigger. Maybe it will get the attention of the universe sooner. I don't know. In any case, having the support of all these people, and you don't have to know who they are, just read their names and what they want. I'm really glad, again, that you came here. I really appreciate your clicking like and share. And if you haven't done so already, say head over there. Uh-oh, maybe it's over there. This is a new camera, and it makes things be backwards. So I think you have to go over there. If you give me your name and email address, I'll send you a copy of how to take your first steps on your spiritual path. I wish you a week filled with many blessings. And do, do you take a look at where you are and all the gifts in your life right now.